Here's the deal right up front. IUSS has absolutely nothing to do with a shortened sterilization cycle. It also has nothing to do with a dry time. You're going to want to hear this. <laughs> Hey sterile pricing professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. Good to see you. You look pretty good out there. Hey, I just wanted to share, finally got some filler on my tattoo for all you tattoo enthusiasts out there. Some nice roses, little filler over here. You know, working on that full sleeve. I'll get there, I'll get there. In today's video, I'm gonna share the true factual standards when it comes to IUSS. No guessing, no regurgitated information, and absolutely no false marketing to get you to buy a product one tray. All I ask in return is that you hit that subscribe button and support the channel. It's that easy. Depending on who you ask, you'll get a wide variety of answers when it comes to IUSS. If you're in any of the Facebook pages, you will definitely see that time and time again. Now, I have stepped foot in a lot of sterile processing departments, and I have to tell you that every single one has got IUSS wrong in some form or fashion. So I am going to hopefully break this down so it is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Right up front, what is IUSS? Immediate Use Steam Sterilization. It's also formally called FLASH. Now let's start with a quick history lesson, my friends. I'm gonna ride that magic school bus. The initial intent for flash sterilization was to get an instrument as quickly from dropped off the field back onto the sterile field for use. Yep, surgical techs have had butterfingers for quite some time. The way that flash sterilization would work back in the day is an instrument would go into a container and it would go through an abbreviated sterilization cycle, um, usually in a small sterilizer within the operating room core is where they usually were. As soon as the sterilizer was done, someone with a mask and gloves would transport that open tray of an instrument directly from the sterilizer to the, the sterile field. They use the term flash because the process from start to finish was a fraction of the normal time, which made it a flash to get it back. Or the phrase is also back in a flash. In the years leading up to the official change in 2011, evidence-based standards were uh, gaining traction and work was being done to better understand and evaluate the sterile processing arena. Back in the day, sterile processing was basically the Wild West and not many leaders or even uh, accrediting agencies knew a lot about the standards and would often just kind of rely on the workers themselves to explain to them what was appropriate or not. In my early career of sterile processing back in 2003, flash was actually a regular occurrence. It was used quite a bit. It was somewhere in 2005, 2006, where there was this push to really look at documentation and processes. And I remember everything to tighten up quite a bit around 2009. And in 2009, Joint Commission sent out a message they finally got smart and they announced that they were gonna be taking a strong approach to review and evaluate flash sterilization. They have gotten incredibly more knowledgeable over the years, um, but still some surveyors fall short, but I assume that's constantly gonna be elevating, so don't count on that. It was in 2011 that Amy released the new term IUSS. The reason they went with this complete name change, instead of just changing the standards and keeping it called Flash, they went with a completely different name change because they wanted to absolutely do what they could to wipe out the old practices. But unfortunately, here we are 12 years later and everyone still regurgitates the old Flash word itself as well as the practices around it. Now, Amy did the right thing in trying to change the language. Unfortunately, it was just so ingrained in the field. And because it produces this quick result and everyone loves quick results, it is very hard to backtrack something like that. So with IUSS, the standards that were set was that instruments had to be processed in a closed container, which hadn't been done before. It was usually open containers. They had to be deemed for immediate use only and not saved for later cases that were gonna happen in like two or three hours. And they absolutely had to be for documented emergencies and not for convenience or lack of, of tray supply. Back in the day and sometimes in some places today, Flash or IUSS is used to um, increase the speed of turnovers. This is because nobody wants to wait 
and none of the leaders want to approve purchasing of more instruments, which is what needs to happen anyways. Every time I see billboards or commercials about hospitals loving their patients, I want to throw up. Okay, history lesson is over. Let's get into the proper way to do IUSS. Amy ST79 2017 actually has a specific section in the manual dedicated to IUSS. It is chapter 10.2.3. Now, believe it or not, even though IUSS is such a very touchy subject, Amy has very little to say about it. And honestly, that is extremely disappointing to me, especially when it leaves room for companies such as OneTray to use marketing schemes to mislead and guide people in the wrong direction. As stated earlier, IUSS is already a compromised thing because it produces this quick result. So when you add an agency selling uh, trays that they say are not IUSS, but produce the same speed and result, it's gonna really just cause a nightmare in the system which it did. So in the manual, the first thing it says is IUSS is not to be used for convenience or substitute for insufficient instruments. Well, that already undermines one tray, which markets their tray saying, you don't need more instruments. You can just turn over what you have faster. Amy also elaborates that you should have enough trays to complete the volume of surgical load that you or your facility designates and that you should be able to perform all the recommended steps from transporting to sterile processing, the entire hand washing, uh, disinfection, thermal disinfection, automated washing, whatever, ultrasonic, and the proper inspection and packaging and full sterilization before it gets back to the OR. Next, it states it should only be used in urgent situations. Next, it says that all items that undergo IUSS must be decontaminated in accordance with chapter seven of Amy. And chapter seven is all the guidelines around manual cleaning and automated cleaning. Just because this is urgent does not give you free reign to cause any shortcuts. Next, instruments must be placed in a rigid closed container and that container must be validated for IUSS parameters. Next, it states that IUSS items cannot be stored for later use. It is either used right now or it is opened and re goes through the process. And lastly, it must be clearly marked and identified as an IUSS item. And the reason for this is a lot of IUSS trays actually look like a normal tray. You'll have the long trays like Asculap, for instance, has IUSS trays where it's got the filter tops, it just doesn't have a filter bottom. But the trays look identical. And that's it. It doesn't explain the exact parameters that IUSS must be. It doesn't state how many instruments can be in the container when it is processed. It doesn't even state whether you have to use a bio in an IUSS load. Isn't that freaking crazy? How many of you have been told over the years that an IUSS load absolutely must have a bio in it? I've always heard that. Doesn't it blow your mind that Amy does not even specify that requirement? When it comes to sterilizer efficacy, Amy states IUSS sterilizers are the same as any other sterilizer with a requirement to test with a bio weekly, preferably daily. It boggles my mind, it really does. So of the three items I mentioned, which are no required parameters, no number of instruments, and no bio requirement in the load, we have absolutely clarified that the biological question is understanding that you treat it the same as any other tray. As for the other two, who dictates those outcomes? This is where everything comes back to the tried and true IFU. Did you like that rhyme? And I am referring to the IFU of the medical device instrument itself, not the container's IFU. The container's IFU is important, but it absolutely never overrides the instrument's IFU itself. Now there's three IFUs that you must consider. The instrument, the packaging container, and the sterilizer. You always start at the instrument IFU. So the instrument IFU will dictate whether IUSS is an approved option or not. And it'll either state exact parameters like minimums that you must follow, or sometimes they'll they'll push off and say, follow the sterilizer's IFU. The container IFU can then be 
assessed to see if the parameters of the instrument match the capabilities of the container. And then lastly, you make sure that the sterilizer itself has been validated to run at those parameters. I know it's a lot, but it's easier if you start at the instrument and go instrument, container, sterilizer. Technically, you should already know what your sterilizer's capabilities are, and you should know what the container capabilities are. So really, it's just that there's such a large number of instruments, sometimes you have to check in the moment. Okay, but here's the main point of this video. What does the term IUSS actually mean? Does it mean a shortened sterilization cycle? Actually, no, that has nothing to do with IUSS. IUSS, according to Amy, means the shortest possible time between the removal of an item from the sterilizer to its transfer to the sterile field. IUSS is the time between removal from sterilizer to transfer to sterile field. That timeline is what IUSS is. Nowhere in there does it state an abbreviated cycle. The only things it says, which I mentioned earlier, is about cleaning, uh, immediacy of use, and rigid container. So where does this shortened cycle stuff actually come from? Well, IUSS, in all seriousness, removes a key component to the entire tray life process. Do you know what that is? Nope, it's not drying time. That isn't what IUSS is. It's the cooling time. Yes, I know you might be like, Brandon, what? IUSS is about the cooling time? IUSS has everything to do with eliminating the cooling time of any sterilization cycle. And working backwards, so if an IUSS item is not going to cool and naturally exhaust the steam that's in it and get to room temperature on its own, then why do we even need a dry cycle? This is where a lot of companies got smart and they dropped the need for dry time because if we were gonna transport it straight to the room anyways, then dry time is useless. So please, 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 please stop confusing IUSS with the dry cycle and understand it has everything to do with removing the cooling procedure. But understand some companies of instruments still require, even if it is an IUSS cycle, might still say 10 minute dry time. So make sure you follow that. And that might have to do with the design of the tray and the um, amount of moisture that is actually in that tray before it starts the dry time. And maybe 10 minutes of dry time is exactly what is needed to ensure there's no uh, contamination or strike through or whatever may happen. Now for trays that have a mixture of instruments, be careful. I'm talking about your uh, naturally built trays within your department, like a minor tray, major tray, uh, general ortho tray. Those are mixed with lots of instruments. You might have pilling, miltex, you might have a v Mueller, Asculap, you might have a lot of different instruments sitting inside the same tray. And just because they're in the same tray doesn't mean that all their individual IFUs no longer matter. They still matter. There are still companies, for instance, like Pilling, that in their IFU still state they do not recommend IUSS. And Pilling is a pretty popular company. So make sure you evaluate those trays. And lastly, how many instruments can go in an IUSS cycle? I've seen people say a maximum of five. I've seen people say that you can't put a whole tray, but what is the real answer? Oh gosh, I'm so glad you asked. It all has to do with the instrument IFU and the container IFU. Yes, I'm always going back to the basics. For something like Asculap, it doesn't actually specify how many instruments can undergo, but then for a company like Synthes Depew, they state that you can only IUSS individual instruments. And when it comes to IUSS container IFUs, they will actually state how much it can undergo in the IUSS cycle by weight. So it's not a number of instruments, it's the overall weight. Another reason to have scales available. So Flashpak, for instance, has different weights for different containers. Lots and lots and lots of IFU checking here, my friends, but that is the nature of our job. Wow, that was a lot of information. I wanna thank you for sticking around for all this talk on IUSS. Any topics or videos you wanna see, do not hesitate to leave them in the comments down below. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to like. I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.